All right, we're back with uh, the start of Unit 6, Consequences of Industrialization. And today we're going to talk about state expansion from 1750 to 1900. Uh, this is going to focus on the, uh, the theme of cultural developments and interactions. And what you need to know is that European nations were using a, a number of cultural, religious, and racial ideologies uh, to justify imperialism, including things like social Darwinism, nationalism, ideas of, of the civilizing mission uh, and a desire to religiously convert indigenous people. Uh, at the same time, there are also economic motives and rationales playing a major role for imperialism. We're gonna start there. Uh, so let's give a closer look to the economics behind imperialism. The industrial revolution creates a need for access to raw materials that European countries just can't acquire or within their own borders or can't produce enough within their own borders. Things like cotton for textiles, uh, mining for minerals and metals. Think about the tremendous amount of copper wiring that's going to be needed for telegraphs, for example. Um, and overseas empires can provide those raw materials. Overseas empires can also provide markets for finished goods on the back end of production. For example, India is gonna be producing cotton that's taken by the British to run through British textiles and then returned all the way to India for sale in India. And now let's uh, let's hop through some of the, the other rationales, uh, starting with nationalism. The 19th century sees the rise of the nation state as a political entity. A nation state is a territory made up of citizens or subjects that are linked through some kind of shared language or culture or ethnicity. Um, and we see that national identities that are being asserted in Europe um, are, are used as a way to demonstrate strength of a nation over its rivals through empire building. So you, if you build the biggest empire, you feel more nationalist pride. Uh, Great Britain is a great example of this. Their empire is going to stretch around the world, including Australia, India, uh, the Malay Peninsula in Southeast Asia, and a large swath of Africa going from Egypt in the north to South Africa in the south. Uh, it was said uh, by the British that the sun never sets on the British Empire, and this was a point of pride for their, their nationalistic pride for their nation. Um, with regard to France, they're also getting in the empire game, controlling Algeria in North Africa and Senegal in the West, uh, South Pacific Islands, and what is known as French Indochina, the countries today of Vietnam and Cambodia and Laos. Italy is in the game with, uh, with Libya and uh, the Italian Somaliland in Africa. The Italians will also take a, a shot at conquering Ethiopia, but this is one failed attempt at imperialism. We'll talk about that more later. Germany, a newer country, um, you know, Britain wants, uh, Britain says the sun never sets on the, uh, the British Empire. Germany, as a brand new country in the 1870s, says we want our place in the sun as well. And they begin to take territories in West and East Africa. And then Japan. Uh, Japan is the, uh, the exception to the European model for, uh, for imperialism. And after the Sino-Japanese War in 1894, Japan will take um, lands, uh, take Taiwan, and um, eventually take complete control over the Korean Peninsula. Now, we also want to talk about the racist justifications that Europeans were using for imperialism. Notions of racial superiority over European, of Europeans over their non-white colonial subjects were used as justifications. And much of this is based on what we call pseudoscientific beliefs. Um, it's dressed up as science, but it doesn't stand up to any kind of scientific rigor of, of today. Uh, social Darwinism, for example. Social Darwinism is the application of Charles Darwin's theories on evolution through natural selection applied to human societies, giving Europeans the feeling that the reason they are dominating the world in the 19th century is because it's just a survival of the fittest game, much like the species that make it in Charles Darwin's theory. Phrenology. Phrenology is the belief that one's skull size and the shapes of their skull offered clues about intelligence and abilities. And of course, the European phrenologists that are, that are creating these ideas are giving European physiology superior traits. 
Also, uh, Europeans were looking to create a culturally homogenous society, even in their empires. Europeans had very little concern over, over the cultural groups that they were uh, imperializing, whether they were splitting cultural groups into two, uh, two territories or combining them into uh, one colonial state. Um, this is going to lead to social issues and conflicts in the future that Europeans just didn't care about in the 19th century. European languages were, were pushed into these colonial subjects um, to bring some kind of cultural unity to diverse peoples. And that's why we still see French, for example, uh, spoken in many African countries or English in many former European, or pardon me, former English colonies. European cultural norms also were imposed on colonial subjects. And here we see uh, an image of, of a, um, a school for Native American children um, that is trying to indoctrinate the natives um, into Western white American culture. There were also religious motivators, mo uh, motivations surrounding imperialism. Europeans would use missionaries to try to convert indigenous people as a justification for this control. Um, this is going to be seen by Europeans as a way of civilizing colonial subjects by inserting their Western culture and religion. So you could justify domination because you were improving their, their, their livelihoods uh, by bringing them religion. Religious institutions did, however, provide a lot of humanitarian aid while working to convert people. Many of the schools and, and hospitals that were created in colonial territories were organized by religious organizations and through donations to religious organizations. So what do we take about out of this? Uh, Europeans used a number of rationales to justify their domination of the non-white world. Uh, economic needs uh, were a primary cause of this push for empire building. And then rationalizations for the, the creation of empires centered on nationalist ideas, racial superiority, and the quest to convert people to Christianity. We'll see you next time.